Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone. This is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is Lesser. Yay! And this is You've Got Five Options show. Yes, so we are back with a second episode where we are trying to help Paul with solving his life challenge. And the life challenge is about Paul feeling, feeling exhausted and uninspired and not really creative, which is not really cool because he has a passion, he's a musician and he would love to yeah, create music. But I think Marta, just for the listeners who tuned in, maybe we can read the challenge again. I think that's an awesome idea. Yes, and I think it's awesome as well. <laughs> Amen, fist bump. Not because it's mine, just because it's awesome. Okay, so here it goes. I'm a musician. Music is my passion and something that I truly love doing. I was working in music industry before and it brought me great satisfaction. But then my life changed. I moved to another country, got married, then divorced and currently I am co-parenting my six-year-old boy. I also have a full-time employment that is not connected with music but it allows me to pay the bills. My challenge is that after I go back from work and then take care of my son, I feel tired. I don't really feel like doing anything music related. I don't have time to work on it and my creativity is not there. My question is, how do I get back to creating and recording music while most of the time I feel exhausted and uninspired? Yes, that was the challenge and in a first episode that if you have missed, you can always revisit and listen to on our YouTube channel that is for free. You've got five options. If you haven't listened to it, please do so. And if you don't have time now and you tuned in just right now, we would just like to tell you that we have discussed the first option, meaning the body. Uh, so how important it is to take care of yourself physically. Uh, we have also discussed uh, a little bit, uh, that was an interesting uh, remark from Marta, that many times we go into this loop of having dreams and going for them when we are younger, then settling down with the family and I would say toning it down a little bit. And then after sometimes many of us want to follow the dream again. And we also talked about what to do if your child turns blue. So I think <laughs> if your child turns blue, you should definitely revisit the episode on YouTube because we have some tips about that. No? Yes. Oh yeah, we're so smart and funny. Why everyone is laughing and no one is saying anything, guys? So, yes, if you are curious about all of the things that I have just mentioned, please revisit our first episode. And uh, we have come up with five options for Paul because this is the name that we give to our anonymous friend. And uh, the first one was take care of your body. And today we will be talking about option number two and three, which is set up your vision and goals. And option number three, start the dreaming and keep yourself motivated. In the third episode, you will listen about routines and habits which is option number four and option number five people around you surround yourself with like-minded people so today it's option number two and three and I think in the third first option take care of your body we have discussed yeah how important it is to take care of your body especially if it's winter because we are recording this now it's mid -ma uh, mid march although you will listen to this uh, episodes on er, in april right but uh, currently we are in the middle of a really cold long 
winter and uh, I think it's really really important to take care of yourself and of your uh, physicality to take vitamins and supplements and uh, check up on yourself and have even maybe longer uh, sleeping uh, time. Lasse, I think he found it quite beneficial when we discussed that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, are you tired? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I only have T-A-T-T. -T. Yes. <laughs> Which is? Tired all the time. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine, guys, that there is even an acronym if you are tired all the time? or exhausted, you actually have T-A-T-T. -T. So remember, we, we can actually make t-shirts like I have T-A-T-T, -T, forgive me. No, I actually want to make a t-shirt uh, about the opposite, you know? I don't want to be tired all the time and I want to don't want to send that message to the universe. So what would you put on a t-shirt? I are <laughs> A T T. I'm rested all the time. Ah, okay. There is no such a, a syndrome. I'm sorry to say, but Marta, you might be onto a gold mine right now. Lasse, what are you thinking? <laughs> what I was just thinking about the acronym, like yeah. how it's pronounced it or something like that, you know. I rat. I rat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I think you would sell it somewhere, definitely. So yeah, so uh, we are not making T A T T T shirts, obviously. Although we many times feel like we have T A T T, but I think the first uh, option was really focused on this part when you you mentioned Paul that you feel exhausted and tired because many times that comes from very biological causes like lack of uh, proper food or um, rest or vitamins. But uh, you also mentioned that you connect this uh, feeling exhausted and tired with lack of creativity and inspiration and that might be something uh, totally different because actually guys I have a first question for you and I hope you will answer because otherwise that will be one awkward silence do you think personally that there is a difference between inspiration and creativity I think that inspiration is something that can sparkle creativity I mean, if you get like really inspired by something, you you are probably much more likely to just go ahead and start creating. But creating is also just simply producing something, bringing something to life. So from an inspiration to a moment when something is actually created, there's also a process <laughs> mm. of creating. That's how I would connect it. Mm -hmm. Lassa? Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty uh, nice way to, to view it, that inspiration is the, you know, moment of, of getting an idea or you know being inspired and and creativity is maybe like the process of actually creating uh, creating something taking action on it you know mm -hmm. that's uh, just a question yo is a danish <laughs> thing or is it more like yo we are in a bronx now yo yo <laughs> Where did that came from? <laughs> you said yo did i say yo yes oh man is it danish uh Yo. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, you can say it if it's a J O. It's like a different way of saying yes. Yo. Okay. Yo. yo. Yes. Did, uh, some people say that. It, no, it was, if I said it, I probably didn't do it as a bronze thing. Like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Not yeah. like that. Well, I'm I'm kind of like I cannot really feel this Danish stuff, you know, no. the Danish language. <laughs> so for me, it was more like yo, man. But uh, <laughs> if if other uh, listeners that do not necessarily speak Danish are listening, then yo can also be yes in y Danish, yeah, right? Yeah, it can. Okay. It can. Okay. Awesomeness. Uh, Marta, I think you are pretty much on spot because when I was reading about uh, creativity and inspiration they those are actually two different things and uh, I am not sure uh, what Paul exactly meant because it was written in his challenge that I feel I don't have energy to make the creative work and then he said how can I get inspired or I feel uninspired and those are actually two different things and as Marta said inspiration is something that comes to you and actually I think inspiration is an ability to uh, come up with uh, ideas that maybe are a little bit out of the box and very true when you have a sparkle of inspiration then you can create something out of it but I think that many people are perceiving creativity as something very artistic you know I'm creative person so I'm a painter writer singer or whatsoever actually you can be creative in any area of your life you can even be creative in organizing I don't know plates in a kitchen 
you can have a creative solution for that. Uh, so I, I think that and that can be based on a strike of inspiration that came to you. So there are two different things. And actually, I think that inspiration, I read that for a tired brain, sometimes inspiration comes faster, like you have the most inspirational ideas when you are tired or you are in a shower after a long day, like a stroke of genius. And it's apparently because our brain works in a way that makes very uh, efficient logical connections when we are on the top of our game. But when we are tired, uh, our minds start to wander. We don't make the fast connections and we start to connect different thoughts in a different way. And then actually we can have the most unusual out of the box ideas if you believe it or not. So I think being tired, but not T-A-T-T -T -T tired, but maybe tired for, for just some period of time, can actually help you with being inspired. But will it help you to be creative? You know, I would never perceive that being tired could be something good for mm -hmm. inspiration or creativity. But when you have explained it a bit better, what came to my mind was like everywhere I read about that the best time for getting inspired and so on is the morning when you just wake up. And actually, I started now to connect those things because when you wake up, your brain is not yet on the top of your efficient connections between the things, but it's before all the thoughts come. It's before you get cluttered. So maybe this is about a state of mind when you are not driven by your analytical brain, but it's about when you are the most prone to be um, like creative part of a brain because there is this more like analytical part of the brain, the right, right sphere and the left one, which is more uh, responsible for creative work. But then again, I think that if, in the face of what we have just said about creativity and inspiration, some people might think that creativity is just very, you know, like this ideas out of nowhere. But yeah, let's just say that, yeah. The, 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 the other side of the brain or the emotional brain or the sleepy brain can go into places and then we can get inspired for something really weird and out of the box. But when we are tired, then it's very difficult to put those inspiration thoughts or those strokes of genius into an actual thing. I think this is the problem. So I am not sure if, Paul, you have problem with inspiration or with being creative, because uh, in the light of what we have just said, that would be two different things. But I actually assume that you have probably a, uh, a challenge with creativity, because as you have mentioned, you are a musician and you love it and you want to work on it, but you feel exhausted and not creative. I think it's more like to get yourself into the process of, of, of creating music. I think ideas or, or, or the desire to do something is there. What do you think, guys? I am really thinking now about this inspiration and creativity. I can, it's see, really, I can say it, see that. Yeah, it's really amazing because, you know, I just, I just started to think, when does the inspiration come? And it just comes totally randomly. Sometimes when I'm tired, sometimes when I am rested, sometimes when I'm just walking, sometimes when I'm working and it should not come, uh, like I'm working on something else. So I just started, maybe there is some pattern and there is more likelihood uh, statistically for it to come in a certain state of your brain. But I actually think that inspiration can come anytime. I can understand that Paul finds it very difficult to start creating if he doesn't feel any inspiration is coming to him. Mm -hmm. Because it's difficult to just sit down and do create things if the inspiration has not been visiting you <laughs> for a while. So, of course, it's a tough thing to do. But I must say, I have noticed this. I have always thought I'm not a creative person for those reasons that you've mentioned, that creative is someone who is a writer, who is a musician and so on. I was connecting it very much to the art and I was not considering myself being this kind of person. And I completely changed my mind right now. Even my Grammarly is telling me that I'm more creative than 95% of Grammarly users. So mm. uh, I'm really on a high end when it comes to writing right now. But what I wanted to say is that sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm not inspired at all today. I can't write. I can't solve this challenge. But then I just say, okay, 
I have to do it. Someone is waiting for it. So no matter how I feel, do I feel inspired or not? Do I feel tired or not? I just sit down and the first five or 10 minutes might be difficult, but then it starts to come. So even though I have not been feeling inspired, I sit down and start doing and it comes. And if I am inspired and I just, you know, I've had those moments when I was like going to take a nap and then suddenly an inspiration comes to me. I sit down and produce something like really great in my own opinion. That happens very rarely, very rarely uh, that something like this that I consider something I did great. It's awesome. It's awesome when you have that inspiration and you just sit down and produce. But it's very rarely. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's about actually sitting down and giving yourself a chance to create. And this is this is amazing because two things. First of all, this ties up very good to the two options that we will just discuss, meaning the creativity that you are doing something, sitting somewhere and doing something even if you feel tired because you have overall purpose. You know that someone is waiting for that and you are involved in, uh, you've got five options because you want to help people. And that's like a feeling of, of uh, you have a, um, a purpose and you're service minded. That is what keeps your creativity going. That's why you create. Inspiration, however, might be something a little bit different. And I would just like to point out before we will go to the options that I have it a little bit different, Marta, because actually I am inspired constantly. Like I have ideas every day for articles, for books, uh, for weird uh, concepts. Uh, it's like inspiration strikes me from every single direction. I have a problem with creativity. For instance, Marta, you are way better at just sitting and creating stuff, even if maybe, as you say, you have less of those inspiration strikes. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of notes, things that I'm just noting down, I have a problem with creating. So it's really interesting. This is where I see the difference. But Paul, we have made an assumption and it might be a wrong assumption. Hence, if we made a wrong assumption, you are the most welcome to come back to us. But we made an assumption that you actually might have a problem with creating and that is because you are exhausted as we know inspiration that it's not necessarily tied with uh, tied with being tired but creativity is so the second option we wanted to propose to you is to set up your vision and goals and we have actually talked about it in many of our previous radio shows or podcasts so we can also um, propose you in an article that is released on our website what you could revisit but i think it's extremely important to set yourself a vision of what you want to be in two years and your main goal, because this is what will keep you going even if you're tired. I think that's also another idea that I have been thinking a lot about recently. So I'm not sure if I should uh, like, you know, again, bring all my thoughts into... Please do so. So I have been thinking recently because I started to make those visions for myself in the few in a few years, which maybe I was not good at. I have always been good at setting up goals and things I was going to achieve. Not so good in setting a vision, like meaning like why thinking about the why and who and how I want to feel. I was quite a down to earth person uh, that was just about achieving goals. But I started to do those vision things and I think they are great, but I am also hearing a lot or reflecting a lot on the one day at the time thing where you're also enjoying the process. So it's all about some kind of a balance because we will all have different tendencies. There will be some people who will be just living in their vision and they will have this vision created and they will be thinking about it and visualizing and will not be so good about taking action to get there. There will be some people who will be extremely goal oriented and action driven, driven and not even ask themselves, where am I actually going? <laughs> and what's the vision here? here and why is it like that because we have different personalities we are driven by different things and also this part of actually enjoying the process this part of loving every day of your life that's also something that we forget about or probably there are also some people who are only in the moment <laughs> and not thinking about you know what will happen next and where they are going so I am reflecting a lot recently about the right balance 
between having a vision where you want to be, which is important because that's something that drives us. That's where the natural motivation can be born and kept. It's also about having goals, meaning specifically, how am I going to get there? But it's also about the everyday life because we are here and now and we don't know for how long we have the here and now. So it is also about joy and it's also about enjoying the everyday life. I have a challenge sometimes to remember. I have my goals and I have so many. And now that I added a vision which was not there before, I am so driven and I have so many things to do that I tend, for example, to forget, to enjoy, to rest, to take a moment and so on. So that was just my reflections. I don't know if uh, if they were relevant here. They were actually very le- relevant because um, I think there is a lot of truth in what you are saying. I think we need to have a balance between vision and goals. I think we have to have also a balance between working towards our goals and trying to achieve that vision and doing an actual action and then also resting. It's, it's a very interesting human dance that we all have to learn. But here in this option, and I think we will come back to many of the things that you said, Marta. Here I wanted just to point out that in my personal opinion, vision is extremely important. Then you also have the management of your vision. And this is exactly everything you have said. So basically, is your vision supported by goals? Is your vision supported by actions? And do you know how to how to actually find the balance within enjoying the moment and achieving your vision. But in my opinion, you have to have a vision nevertheless. If you don't know what you want or how you imagine yourself in the future, it will be very difficult to align all the goals and actions towards something that will actually bring you uh, satisfaction or happiness. And I think that this is something we have discussed. And we also had this question when we were recording uh, a challenge uh, solution for Sandstorm. Where do you see yourself in two years? And I remember last when you said like, uh, okay, that's actually a very good question. Um, I think Lasse said more something like, uh, yeah, yeah, I came with something really <laughs> intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was uh, making a point, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but I was also put at the spot. I actually do have a vision, but uh, you do. <laughs> but you, but you did. But you did prove a point. You know that. You know mm-hmm. sometimes when you put people on the spot and and like just ask them outright. You know it's like uh, I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. like you do need to have a vision. I feel like it. It gives you more enjoyment in life. It gives you a purpose, something to go towards. That even if you aren't at that stage in your life yet, you know what you're working towards. Exactly. And also the balance between you know resting and and working on achieving your um, vision is super important because I think I used to focus too much on my vision. And if I wasn't achieving my dream, then I was a failure. But that's also my own way of thinking. And I just realized, you know, in the last few years that, you know, friends and family and spending time with them is just as important because it gives me more energy. It gives me enjoyment here and now, you know. So so it's such an important balance. You need to kind of find the right place between both, I feel like. Yeah, yeah and I think that we will actually, that's why we also have option number four, which yeah. is routine and habits. Yeah. And this is where we will talk about, you know, creating a healthy routines and healthy habits in your life that can support both your vision, your goals, and mm-hmm. also that time that you need with other human beings, yeah. like family and, and, and your kids, if you have, uh, last you don't have children. No, yet. no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that is uh, that is also a discussion it, and it all ties up because we are making a really, really great points here. But the, the exercise for you, Paul, in second option is to set up your vision. So if, for instance, you are like, I love music and I want to produce music, but it's more like, yeah, what's the purpose? Like, mm. is it just for fun? Is it just an enjoyment? Is it just my passion? Or do I actually want to, I don't know, record an album? Or do I want to maybe help other artists or do I want to teach kids? I don't know whatever that is, but you have to have a vision. How does my passion actually um, contributes to the future self 
that I invented. And uh, I think that uh, th the main exercise here would be to actually like we always propose, take a piece of paper and if it doesn't come this day, maybe it will come in three days or in three weeks. But mindfully try to imagine what do you want to be? How do you want to feel? What do you want to do in a year, in two, in five years? And for many people, as you last said, this is like a question like what the hell am I supposed to answer? Mm -hmm. And it makes me sad, but not in a in a pit pitiful way, pit pitiful. <laughs> it makes me sad in a just that People don't think about it because I know by myself, I also had those times, I always had this idea, I am a writer, but I was forgetting about it and I was just living my life weeks to weeks, just doing things like going to work and, you know, and there was nothing more. There is nothing more to dream about. But if you have that vision, if you know where you're going, then you can actually get that motivation from within even if you're tired and that ties up to what Marta mentioned when I feel tired and I get the challenge and I know someone is waiting for the solution I am sitting and I'm starting to create because you have overreaching purpose and that purpose Marta I think is connected with uh, some sort of vision of you helping people that, that that would be your purpose yes that's definitely the thing and i i am also thinking about a vision because we are alive that's a breakthrough news revelation and our vision can also be alive meaning don't hang up yourself on one vision because sometimes that's also a mistake we do. We imagine ourselves doing something specific. We think it's our vision. And then if it doesn't come true, we get disappointed and then we lose the motivation and so on. Allow your vision to be alive together with yourself. Allow your vision to be something creative. Take under consideration that every day you are learning something new about yourself. And actually vision is a journey. It's not a one time exercise. It's not that one time you sit, okay, I see myself on a stage. I am super uh, musician. Everyone wants to listen to me. I have 10,000 people, you know, and if it doesn't happen, you are disappointed. I also heard something so wonderful recently. Have your vision, dream about it and allow it to come to you organically. It doesn't have to come in a week or a year. Allow it to come organically, but it's also keep it alive yeah. because that's something that we m might sometimes forget as well. I totally agree. As I said to you just guys, I always uh, dreamt of being a writer. But for instance, what we are doing right now with Marta, you've got five options, radio show, uh, podcasting, that's something I have not envisioned. But because I knew what let's say my life purpose is, and then it just came as an opportunity, we tried it and we love it. Mm. So this is exactly that thing, be open that your vision might change, that your vision is actually a life thing. It's like you, you know, we change our entire life. It's not a fixed thing, you know, it's like, it's not like when I was 10, I wanted to be an astronomer and you know, that, that's done. I only have to dream about this. So very good point, Marta. But the most important thing in this option Paul is to set that future vision of yourself and to have that idea of what you want to be and, and, and just dream big and then to set up goals that will allow you to get there. But I think we will discuss about this in the third episode. Um, so Paul and the rest of the guys, I hope you will tune in for our next radio show. Thank you for today. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.you vegot 5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz 
og 89,5 MHz.